Predictions. It's Wednesday, February 24, 21. Good morning. Great to see you. Glad you are here. Glad you are pursuing God with everything that you are seeking the answers for the day. What will God bring? What opportunities will I have? And what challenges will I face? No better place to be prepared than right here. I couldn't thank you enough for, for being on this journey with me. So let's get started. Your weekly invitation to live service to join us on Sunday morning. You need to make a reservation and you need to make it by no later than tomorrow at noon. That's so that we can get our transportation routes set and that we make sure that we continue to keep that attendance somewhere around 30 in the sanctuary. Uh, that's what we can comfortably seat and still keep that social distancing that you've heard too much about over the last year. Prayerfully, vaccinations are underway. I believe many of us have had opportunity to be vaccinated. And as soon as uh, we uh, start seeing the numbers and, and, and people out of harm's way, we will look to increase, uh, increase our numbers uh, and decrease the amount of uh, restriction. But as for right now, we are still making sure that everyone remains healthy and safe. So if you'd like to join us, and I'd love for you to be there, make sure you're calling up Dave and, and getting on the list so we can, can pick you up this Sunday. We're continuing to talk about the promises of God. Uh, there's a lot of uh, confusion, perhaps. There's a lot of uh, what are the promises and some people making very short lists. I've seen someone uh, you know, preach the seven promises of God, which is a very nice sermon. But considering there are over 8,000 promises of God, uh, contained in his word, and truly, as we pointed out on Monday, the promises of God are found in God's word. God gives us his word. And so everything spoken <laughs> in our Bible could be considered the promises of God. We will narrow that down in the coming weeks and look at uh, what these promises are related to and um, the importance of receiving promises from God and the uniqueness of God's promises, those are in weeks ahead. Right now, we're just trying to figure out, did he make promises to us? Or is he promising someone else? And I'm, and I'm going to sneeze. Good morning. So yesterday, I kind of gave you a, a little bit of a homework assignment and we looked at this passage from Exodus chapter 3, verse 15. God also said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is the name forever, the name you shall call me from generation to generation. God's identifying himself through the promise, through the promise that he made to Abraham. And we saw yesterday that certainly a couple of generations from Abraham into Jacob, that promise was, was being uh, you know, reinstated, uh, respoken, uh, had not been not in force, but was being being given to Jacob. And the question for you yesterday was, 
What happened to Ishmael and what happened to Esau? Why aren't they listed as you know, in this, this line? Certainly they were also sons of Abraham. So did you come up with an answer? Well, we're going to skip quite a few years ahead into Romans. If you recall, Romans, we spent some time there last week talking about how, uh, what a wonderful kind of uh, all encapsulating uh, story of the gospel and uh, defining our role as the church making sure that the same gospel was being preached in Rome as it was in uh, uh, in Paul's region or the region assigned to the other apostles. And all you know, gives us a pretty complete look at the gospel. Well, it also discusses, because it is geared towards Jewish believers in Rome, it also discusses this very thing of Abraham's descendants. We find this in Romans 9 and verse 6. It is not as though God's word had failed. For not all who are descended from Israel are Israel. Nor because they are his descendants are they all Abraham's children. On the contrary, it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. So Paul is making it clear that just because you are in the line of Abraham doesn't make you a child of God, a child of the promise. Okay. So, if you recall the story of, of Abraham and Sarah, God made a promise to Abraham, and that promise was Isaac. But they got tired of waiting on God's promise, so they decided to intercede. They decided that they had a better plan. If this was truly God's plan to, to uh, bring this promise to the fore, they're like, we don't have any children. He, he's talking about sands of the, the seashore. And along came Ishmael through uh, Hagar, one of Sarah's servants. And we know that that created a whole nother issue and a whole nother branch of Abraham's children by lineage, but those were not the children of the promise. The children of the promise were to come through Isaac. And then if we just get another branch down and we look at Esau, Esau gave his, uh, he was firstborn and gave that away because he was hungry. And also speaks of God choosing Jacob over Esau. And so that lineage passed not through, through Esau, but through Jacob. So, Paul begins to answer the question, who was this promise made to, and who truly are the children of Abraham? In other words, it is not the children by physical descent who are God's children, but it is the children of the promise who are regarded as Abraham's offspring. 
a little bit more of a cliffhanger. Going to have to hang with me again till tomorrow. We're going to pick up, we're actually going to go back a chapter in Romans to pick up the rest of Paul's thought. But for today, we're recognizing that Abraham was given the promise. And that promise was, was handed down through Isaac and Jacob. And God identifies himself as God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And the reason why Esau and Ishmael are not included in that passage is because it wasn't by physical descent. It was by God's chosen path. I think you understand where we are leading in this, but we also already can start seeing that how that path expands. But we'll pick up from, from here tomorrow, so stay tuned. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. You are gracious. And you make a way where there is no way. You've invited us in. And we are grateful, Lord. As we explore your promise, help us to have a better understanding of who we are. And the peace you desire to give each of us. What a privilege it is to be the bearer of your name. Lord, we pray for our neighbors today. We pray that your grace and your mercy will cover. That they too may be called to be your child. We share your heart, Lord. We don't desire to see anyone not invited to your banquet. <laughs> Help us, Lord, to have the courage to complete our mission Help us have compassion towards those that are very different than ourselves. Rid us of our prejudice. And of our, our anger. And replace it with love. love and abundance, Lord. We desire to see the world changed. We desire to see your kingdom enlarged salvation given and received. We pray all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. All right, tomorrow time for the big reveal. 
I am pretty sure most of you are following along and understanding and uh, if you want to read ahead or behind in Romans I'll meet you there tomorrow know that I love you and that I miss you till we see each other again be good